I think I would like to ask you to discuss, is it possible to turn spirituality into a science? Can you have a logical and a scientific attitude to spirituality? Is that possible? That would be my question. There have been many uh, world teachers throughout the time, and Martinus uses an expression that the eternal truth, the very truth, has incarnated several times here on the planet Earth. There's been, I don't know, but Lao Tse, Confut, the wise men with, with the pyramids, uh, Buddha, Jesus. So there have been many different incarnations of the eternal truth. And according to Martinus himself, he also represented the eternal truth. When he was 30 years old, in 1921, you could almost calculate, he was born in 1890. And when he was 30 years old, he got his cosmic consciousness, his big revelation or initiation. And from that moment, he had new senses. He had new cosmic senses, so he could sense the eternal truth through intuition. He could observe it, the spiritual world. And the next 60 years of his life, he wrote uh, uh, an eternal world picture, Martinus cosmology, Martinus uh, spiritual science, uh, whatever you call it. And um, he, the purpose of his writings is to contribute to the uh, everlasting peace on planet Earth. So it is uh, of public interest. But um, there have been many world teachers, and they have adapted the teaching to the people who lived at that time. That means the people at the time of Buddha and Jesus and Muhammad, they were not so, so intelligent, they were not so clever as today. So they had to have it explained in their way. You have to adapt the teaching to the experiences of the pupils. You have the first, second, third, fourth grade. But nonetheless, Buddha and Jesus, they spoke the truth. And it is uh, very, very good to believe in people who speak the truth. It's the worst to believe in people who are not speaking the truth. <laughs> that can be a catastrophe. For that reason, the, religious has, the religions has played a very, very big role, because very wise men have told them the truth. But they did not argue for the truth. They didn't explain it, because it was not needed. They had no questions. And this is uh, today about modern spirituality. And for 300 years, people have gone to school in Denmark. It has been an explosive evolution of intelligence. And also, uh, um, small children are now going uh, with lots of books into school, and we, they study longer and longer time. And in a way, they become more and more intelligent. In television, we get logical explanations. They are scientific programs. Our planet is becoming very scientific and very technological. So that is the modern times. And modern man asks questions. Why is that truth? So the modern evolution of intelligence has made it impossible for many people to believe blindly. They want to have a logical explanation. And that is what Martinus sees as his uh, mission. That is to give a logical explanation so people with intelligence sort of can accept his analysis. Uh, Martinus regards uh, Jesus Christ, Buddha, as perfect human beings. And they, they knew the eternal truth, but most important that is that they practice. And um, for example, Jesus, he practiced brotherly love, neighborly love. In all conditions, he practiced neighborly love even when he was tortured and killed uh, uh, by the crucifixion. He, could say, he prayed for them, Father, forgive them, they do not what they know. That, that is um, perfection. That, Martinus said the main purpose of Jesus' incarnation was to show an example of the perfect human being. And in other analysis, Martinus thinks, you cannot change the world, but you can change yourself. And that is the best, big job, to change yourself into a Christ being. That is to learn to behave like Christ, did, like Christ did in all daily situations for yourself. But you are, of course, limited 
by your by your abilities, by your talents. But you can go in a way where you are training new abilities and, and new talents. So in a way, Martinus cosmology is also a moral teaching. Martinus shows what is right and what is wrong, what is love and what is not love. And he only stimulates, inspirates people to practice neighborly love. But he says, yes, Christianity, in a way, has been a world religion. But when eternity enters Christianity, it will turn into a science, into a world science. And what did he mean with that? When eternity enters Christianity, you get the eternal life, and then you also get reincarnation and karma. If we only have one life, life is really absurd theater. There is no sense, there is no meaning, there is no purpose. And of course, we experience that in the materialistic period, here in modern times, where intelligence is dominating. But um, when you put karma and eternal life into Martinus' cosmology, then it is logical to behave just like Jesus did. So his purpose is to make a science out of Christianity. He also calls his collected worlds for intellectualized Christianity, or he had turned Christianity into a science. How much of life and universe should you describe in order to give a logical explanation? Then, then Martinus talks about an eternal world picture. He says, what exists now has existed forever and will exist forever. In, as a physicist, I think it's logical. The amount of energy, the sum of energy is constant. You cannot make energy out of nothing and energy cannot disappear. What about energy? <coughs> energy is just something that exists. What about life? Life is just something that exists. exists. It has existed forever and it will exist forever. And he also explains that if you have to give a logical world picture, you have to take everything into account, which means that you have to go to planets, solar systems, galaxies, group of galaxies. You have to consider the whole universe. You have to consider there are organs, living beings, there are cells, living beings, molecules, atoms, electrons, quarks. You have to describe life for all eternity in microcosmos, in all eternity in macrocosmos. There is no smallest living being. There is always smaller living beings built up by smaller living beings, and there is no biggest living being. There are living beings in living beings. So what Martino thinks that is when it comes to, that is that everything is living, and all living beings is one unity, and that is one big living being, and that is the living universe, or God. And the living universe is eternal and infinite. That is everything that exists. Then for Martinus, it's not necessary to be into a religion or a sect or a union. You are only responsible for yourself or responsible for life or the universe. That is what is. So in a way, uh, you can talk about there is a God service in the church. But in a way, for Martinus, everyday life is a God service. And whenever you meet one single living being, you are meeting a cell in God's body. So in every meeting with a human being, with an animal, with a plant, that is a meeting with God. And Martinus, he uh, thinks that all other uh, what's called religions, uh, spiritual directions and so on, all those are inspired by that, they are spiritual brothers. We are all on the same path to the light. We are all towards the same, so we, but the difference is we have different experiences. And for that reason, we have different points of view and we have different ages. And he has two very good analogies. If, for example, in a family there are different children, children, there's a child of five years. This child has the right to be five years. You cannot blame this little person. Why are you only five years, you little idiot? You ought to or already to be eight years. That's stupid. You have the right to have the age you have. Everybody has the right to be as he or she is because here and now today, you are the sum of all previous experiences. You will make some new experiences in the future, but you cannot use the future 
experiences just now. So everybody is as good as he can be for that meaning. Tolerance is the same as science. It's the only scientific attitude, it's the only logical attitude to other human beings to be tolerant to them. That does not mean that everybody is doing right things. I mean, there are criminals, there are psychopaths who are killing other, other people. They cannot do else. But then he thinks, anyway, that society has the right to protect itself against very dangerous people. But you don't have the right sort of to punish them or to take revenge. But you have the, you have the right to protect yourself. I've heard about esoteric teaching and exoteric teachings. There have been many secret teachings and very much of the spirituality is linked together with a guru, with a master, and then there is some pupils, and sort of it is a secret, it's a secret teaching, because it would not be good if this secret teaching came to the big masses. It could be abused, it, it could uh, conduct to catastroph catastrophes. So in the previous um, centuries, it was good to have these secret uh, teachings and uh, very isolated. But Martino thought is here in modern time, with, with reference to modern spirituality, that the eternal truth, the highest teaching, is now going to the big masses. So esoteric teachings is secret teachings. But the debate is then what about the exoteric teachings? How can you transfer the eternal truth to the big masses? And that, Martino thinks, is his mission. Because as he says, very humble, the eternal truth has incarnated several times here on planet Earth, but, but what is needed today is to present it in a logical form, which can be understood in a, in a kind of scientific way. So in a way, Martinus' cosmology is very exoteric. It's based on uh, uh, to be, uh, the plan to be spread for the whole planet. And um, now I heard about the Third Reformation. <laughs> And actually, Martinus has entitled his total work the Third Testament. So in a way, uh, and that is intellectualized Christianity, Christianity as a science, that is Jesus' words or Jesus' behavior uh, turned into uh, a, a science. And of course, if you really scientific and logical understand, the only thing that pays is to practice neighborly love. Then society will will change very much. But whether Martinus is a world teacher, whether his work is a Third Testament, I don't have to claim that because that will show up. If Martinus is a world teacher or not, future will, will show. But uh, Martinus uh, humble says, I cannot express it better than Jesus has done. I cannot express the Sermon on the Mount, our Lord's Prayer and so on. I cannot express it in a bit better way. But my task has been to put it into a logical and a scientific way. Because now people, they have television, they have computers, they have iPads, iPods, and the satellites and so on. The, the whole society today is so much based on intelligence, on technique and intelligence. And for that reason, the old spirituality sort of has to be presented in a modern way. And that can be done through spiritual science. I also studied a little bit about world teachers, Lao Tse, Confuts, but a Theosophical Society um, in 1909 thought <clears throat> that there might come a new world teacher. And they thought it was, would be Krishnamurti. But later on, uh, it showed up that Krishnamurti was not the new world teacher. Um, in Buddhist tradition, they talk about the Buddha would come again uh, in form of Lord Maitreya, Bodhi, Bodhisattvas. Also in Islam, they have the 12th Imam. And uh, in Christianity, they also talk about the sec second coming of Christ. But the second coming of Christ was not as a person. Jesus talks about the spokesman, what's called the paraclete, um, the Holy Ghost. But what is the Holy Ghost? Martinus uh, thinks that the, 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 the Holy Ghost that is uh, the same as a spiritual science. So Martino thinks that his spiritual science is actually representing the second coming of Christ, where Christianity is presented in an intellectualized form. Thank you for the attention. <laughs>